Welcome, everyone, to episode number 1027. We're going to continue the series of talking tech and business with me, Wynn Kramer, CEO of JLab Audio. And today, the, the subtopic here is brand and marketing. And with that, we brought somebody that's an expert in brand and marketing, the SVP of brand and marketing of Major League Soccer, David Bruce. David, welcome. Wynn, thanks for having me. Delighted to, delighted to be here today. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's uh, it's so much fun doing these podcasts because everyone's either stuck at home or stuck somewhere that they generally don't want to be all the time. So this gives them a little bit of uh, a little bit of a break from the quote unquote norm. So we've been having a lot of fun, uh, you know, meeting people around the country. And you and I haven't met before, so it's nice to to meet you. Um, Certainly is. Our two our two products, I guess, have, have been aligned now for going on four years. So JLab is a is a, a title sponsor uh, for headphones and microphones with Major League Soccer. Super excited about that. Um, but we're going to talk brand and marketing today with you, David. And, and I'll just throw a couple of questions your way, and and we'll take it from there if that works for you. Sounds good, Win. Yeah, and we're delighted to have you as a partner. Uh, I think we've got an exciting future together. So hopefully we can get into some of that today with some of the questions. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I, I mean, you come into Major League Soccer as a brand comes um, comes into the market, for lack of a better term, with kind of a leg up on everyone else. And I say that simply because soccer is the most popular sport in the world. Now, Americans don't necessarily know that yet, but they're certainly catching on. And the excitement um, is building with with FIFA across the across the board, in my opinion. Um, how do you kind of leverage the brand and educate Americans about this product. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a it's a little catch twenty two because we are an operator of the global game, and um, it is it is the most global of games. Like you go anywhere in the world, and you, you typically you'll find someone somewhere playing a game of football or soccer. Um, you jump in any taxi anywhere in the world. I always say this two thick say this to people. There's two things that I feel like outside of politics and religion that the world can talk about, and it is football or soccer, doesn't matter where you are in the world, uh, and American pop culture. Uh, <laughs> someone has a point of view or someone has a deep understanding of both of those topics and it can get you into some of the most wonderful conversations. I'll get into that later because from a brand point of view, we're trying to move those two things together. But as it relates to trying to um, express the global game in North America, it's actually really, really interesting because you're right, we should have a leg up because it's this very accessible sport that the world knows. Um, but we we operate in a market whereby there are all these kind of traditional quote unquote North American sports that have been here, you know, forever. We've we're soon to enter our 26th season. You know, you compare that to baseball and, and, and American football, those leagues have been operating for a hundred, 150 years. Sure. So it's not it's not enough just to say we are we are this version of soccer that exists in North America, but it's like really getting behind something that will ultimately mean something to some someone. So we've tried to take, you know, and admire some of the great soccer experiences and products around the world, but create the version that feels very much from this part of the world. So we want to create a version of, of, of soccer that is from U the US and Canada. So that means you, know, you obviously can't change the game. The game is the game within the, within the white lines. That's the game. But the, the experience and the movement and the energy uh, and the ability for fans to connect into the game that sits around our league, we think it is unique and distinct. You know, we have fan experiences. We have stadium experiences. Uh, we have uh, a different way of thinking about our product. We have playoffs. We have cup. We have all-stars, you know. Most of the soccer leagues around the world don't do that. Um, and we're starting to build up a sense of a soccer culture that you can only really get here in the US and Canada. So you see things like in Portland, you see, you know, Timber Joy, who yeah. is their mascot, slicing a log when they score a goal. That could only happen in Portland. Keep Portland weird. It's it's absolutely part of how that club has lent into, okay, what makes a city different and how do we build a soccer experience from that? So Timber Joy slicing a log, throwing it up in the air when this team scores, you could only get away with in MLS. You could only get away with in, in Portland. 
you know, you think about somewhere like Atlanta, one of our newer teams, you know, have only been in the league for three seasons now. You know, they're very much connected to what young Atlanta is all about. And they're very much kind of leaning into that sensibility. And that's interesting because they've then extrapolated a lot of that into, okay, well, how do we put a soccer team that connects to this global game of football in this really exciting uh, market and city in the U.S.? So they've looked at what makes Atlanta special. And there's there's a lot, but uh, one in particular is hip hop and trap music uh, and everything that that means to the city of Atlanta. And if you go to an Atlanta United game, the supporters group, that's that's that group of really passionate supporters that sit behind the goal, stand behind the goal, jump around and sing songs for the whole 90 minutes. They, they sing hip hop songs that they've converted into soccer chants and they call themselves a footy mob. That's all very deliberate. It's a very deliberate play because they want to be a expression of this global game of football in America but in Atlanta, it feels very specific to the city of Atlanta. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a blessing that we can connect into this global, to go back to your question, that we can connect into this global sport. And it's a sport, as I mentioned, that's super accessible and everyone kind of knows something about. But for us, it's about, that's not enough. We've got to create our own dialect. And our dialect, that means something to all of our fans in all of our cities so that we can really get behind it and say, this is, this is what the brand of you know, MLS really is all about. That's really cool. And, you know, when I think about Atlanta, that city was just starved for, for soccer. I mean, clearly, when that, when that team began playing, that, that entire city, you could just feel the energy and the buzz come from that city with it. It was, it was really, really cool. You know, I have a story. I, I went to Cup in, uh, in Toronto two years ago. I think it was two years ago. And it was the year after Toronto lost. So now yeah. it's, it's in Toronto. And I land at the airport and I take a cab to my hotel and I was staying with the ML folk, MLS folks downtown. I'm in the cab and um, I'm talking to the cab driver. He's asking why I'm there. And he goes, you're here for the for the soccer match. I said, yeah, I'm here to watch the cup. And he goes, oh, last year, my sons cried for a week after Toronto lost. So I really hope that they get this. They get this win this week. And of course, Toronto did get the win and the, and the city went nuts. And it was just one of those really cool experiences. But you could tell that whatever you're doing from a branding perspective in these little communities, it's it's working, right? And and once I think once you get people engaged in the team and the game, um, it, it they just go crazy for it. It's, it's a really amazing experience. And, mm. and seeing how you guys are creating... And you, and you nailed it. And this was one of the things I wanted to talk about. But you talked about Portland and Atlanta, and, and I talked about Toronto. But there's all these little micro markets, so to speak, or markets that you're doing a great job uh, from a brand perspective of, A, you're, you're educating about soccer and that experience in the league, but you're pulling in community that is, uh, that is relevant. And you're not trying to force Portland onto Atlanta or Atlanta onto Nashville, et cetera. You're, you're pulling yeah. stuff that's unique. It's it's really cool to watch. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. You know, it's uh, it takes it it takes a lot of time to build community, as as you guys know. I mean, I think any any marketeer, any brand builder, that's key to success is creating a community of passionate individuals that exist around your product, or around your experience, who ultimately become your best storytellers, right? So for us, based based on what you just said, when um, a key for us has been how do we get these passionate individuals that are clearly connecting into something locally that's very unique and different? How do we get them to be our biggest evangelists and tell our story for us? Because as marketeers, I can sit here all day banging on about how great I think MLS is, and that's only going to get us so far. But if Wynn Kramer, who's a fan of X team, then starts to tell all of his friends and his family about what an amazing experience this is and how passionate he is about following his particular team, that's when this thing starts to really connect and really, really build because that's essentially what you're trying to do with community. We're trying to give the the movement or at least give the fans the sense that we're in this together and we're building this movement together and it's up to you to tell the story for us. And I think if brands can do that, you unlock so much power because essentially you have all of these storytellers that are right there that are, are totally engaged in, in the experience and they want to tell their their friends and family about what it is that they're so passionate about. Hundred percent. And then you're not buying share; it's organic. And organic share 
is so powerful and genuine, in my opinion, that it, it just becomes palpable. I mean, it's so, so strong. Very much so. You know, as, as you go out from a league and within these markets, David, um, are you creating different missions and values for each different market? Are you working with those clubs to do that? We're kind of working under some overarching game, which is, which is soccer. Uh, but are you creating different missions and values for the markets? Yeah, we are. I mean, I think it's so important. I think the thing that we, the ethos that we have front and center is this idea of one size fits nobody. We operate, you know, at such scale now. When I joined the league in 2012, we had we had 17 teams. We're just about to start our 26th season and we have 27 clubs in MLS, soon to be 30. It's been key for us to recognize that every market is so radically different. The makeup of of the consumer, um, the history with the game, um, the things that motivates people, what a city is known for. It is just so, so different when you go across all the clubs we have in the US and the clubs that we have in Canada. So for us, it's crucial that that individual team builds up its own sense of, of purpose, of who it is, what it stands for, how it connects into some of those examples I gave earlier, but how does that city connect into or that club connecting to what makes that city special and how do they then express that through a soccer brand that has to sometimes compete against brands, sports brands from other sports that have been around there for generations. And how does it come in and speak to and capture an audience in a way that some of the other sports teams might not be doing? So they really find that white space that's unique to that particular particular um, MLS club. So we have that across every team. And then at the league, you know, we have a sense of who we are, what makes us special. And that creates a halo effect and it enables and creates a platform that enables these clubs to come to life at the local level, to truly yeah. understand what's going to make them different in a local marketplace so they can capture share, capture attention, tell unique stories and build their movement that ultimately is connecting into this broader major league soccer movement that uh, ultimately we're all we're all buying into and, and celebrating. And, and it's a genuine experience when you do that, in, in my view. I mean, it becomes yeah. so, God, you can just touch it. You know, you said something that, that I like, and I use this term a lot, and that's uh, one size fits nobody. Mm. And, you know, in, in, in our business, um, we, we do, you know, earbuds and headphones, and we have a really broad assortment of earbuds and headphones. Let's, let's call it 60 different styles of different things. And, and I've always said, unless your name is Apple, the one size fits all model doesn't work. Mm -hmm. you know, people want choice. If they're um, if they're going to go work out, they're wearing sneakers. If they're going to go to the office, they're usually not wearing sneakers. And you need to have a, a headphone or an earbud that supports these various activities and what you're doing. Kind of very similar to this one size fits all or one size fits nobody phrase that you just mentioned. That you you can have this overarching vision and and set of guidelines. But then you you allow the freedom within these micro markets to do to do what they do best and, and bring some of their soul into the conversation, for lack of a better term. It's cool. Absolutely. Okay. When you look at the values as the organization, what do you view as the most important? Yeah, it's uh it's interesting. It's a, it's, it's a great question. I think maybe I, I might have answered this a little bit differently 12 months ago, but I think is as folk who've had to operate brands through, uh, which I think has been, you know, probably one of the uh, more interesting 12 months of my career. You know, when you think of everything that's happened, right, from COVID, I mean, as a sports league, we're, we're taking people to real experiences in real outdoor venues. Uh, we've had to stop all that. I mean, for a period of time last year, the league was on hiatus. We were able to come back later in the season. We put a bubble tournament on in Orlando. But the opportunity for fans to be at these games was few and few and far between. So, um, you know, that happened. COVID is still here. Social justice happened and everything around that movement, which is um, which is here to stay and something that is going to be core to how a lot of brands are going to communicate and go forward. Um, it, it's just an incredibly challenging year. The, the news cycle was changing every 24 hours. You had the you had the election thrown into that mix. So you had these big, these three huge events. Um, and they caused all kinds of different challenges as well as opportunities for businesses. But also, it was interesting when you think about 
what is it what is all that done for the consumer what has that done for people who are sitting at home who haven't been able to go to an office for 11 months because they're working remote haven't been able to see their family you know have had to adapt their lives kind of dramatically it's really interesting when you think about okay well what is what is the role of sport what is the role of mls in amongst that uh in amongst that world so there's a few values and there's a few things that we do at MLS that I think have been really important for us to get behind and ensure that we deliver upon. Uh, and the first one is, you know, we see a world of um, of division where we're all kind of divided and we're all in these different camps. Um, and we see an opportunity for brands to bring people together to unify. And I think sports is that great aggregator. I think soccer is is arguably the greatest aggregator of that because it is the most diverse sport uh, on the planet. It is, as you commented on earlier, it's played in almost every corner of the globe. If you look at our league in particular, we have 74 different nationalities that are playing in, in MLS. That is way more than any other sport. And it, it really reflects what we think the new North America is becoming, which is this true representation of the world this eclectic representation of the world, uh, this sense of how young people kind of see themselves in the world. So this idea of openness and being open and welcoming to people from all kinds of different backgrounds, it's almost like you can bring your true self to the table and we'll, we'll, we'll capture that in the experience that we want to build together. So that idea of openness, come as you are, being, being incredibly welcoming is, is one that we really, really believe in. You know, the second one is, I think the, 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 the other, the other opportunity with consumers is, is this, this need to belong, this need to be together. I think we've been apart for so long now. And, you know, at the start of the call, you mentioned, well, it's enabled some of these conversations over Zoom to happen. Like, yeah. I, I've heard that a number of times this year. It's like, we're in it again, but like we're connecting in a way we haven't connected before. But it's, it's not real. Like, we're still doing it all virtually. I look forward to the day when I do get to meet you in person, Wayne. Yeah, but, likewise. You know, we're, we're all feeling that need for real human connection and nothing brings you together more like the game of soccer. So this this idea of belonging in this sense of connecting to something bigger and this connecting to something that your neighbors care about, your community cares about, that reflects your values, that showcases something that's special about the place that you're from is really important. So that that, that idea of belonging, I think to all sports marketers is, is the key because it is, it's almost the... The, the the key to unlock the special sports source of sports, which is this ability to deeply affect someone. Like I'm I'm from a city of Sunderland in the north of east of England, very working class place. I'm a massive fan of that soccer team. And it's it's the thing in my life that brings me the most misery, constant misery. I mean, I've never really had any positive moments. It's constant misery. But in everything else in life, I feel like you win. I'm a pretty savvy marketeer and brand consumer if i have a bad experience i'll simply stop purchasing that product and i'll purchase something from the competitor because my head overrules my heart but in in soccer my team it doesn't matter what this team does to me i cut my head can't logically overrule my heart and i keep going back for more and more and more and i get more and more disappointing so that's the power of great sports marketing if you're able to to hook someone in a way where you're part of something bigger you're part of this collective and, and it, there is something going on in the field for sure. And with success, you get really, it brings so much to that relationship you have with your team. But it doesn't matter because you're with this environment and you're in this movement that you're a part of, that you're growing and shaping. So that idea of belonging is, is a really, really key one. And then the final one, which, I, by the way, I think the world needs more of, especially this year, is fun. We just need to smile more. Like it was a, it was a, it was a pretty crappy 2020 but we just want to have fun and we just want to enjoy ourselves. And sports is about that, the play on the field, that joy, that expression that comes from watching a brilliant, brilliant sports person do something amazing, watching your team win. You know, we got to remind ourselves that in amongst all this, we can still smile and we can still have fun and we can still bring joy. And I think that's something that as a brand, we want to bring a lot more to the table this year. And remind ourselves what 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 we do. It's to put smiles on people's faces. That's really cool that you said that. And and 
if I can add a fourth to this mix, and it's not my job to add to your mix of marketing values, but I'm going to, and that is it's affordable. I can take my family to this match and, and be happy about the price that I paid to, to watch something that's really, really awesome. And that's, that's one of the reasons JLab initially was so interested in, in this relationship and this partnership with MLS, because it's, it's very akin to our consumer. You know, our consumer is somebody who wants an awesome product that's affordable. And I think Major League Soccer is very much in that camp of mm -hmm. watching something awesome that's also affordable. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, was, it was important for us. No, no doubts. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, of reasons why our brands slot together. I think that's definitely a powerful one. You know, the, the, the sport of soccer, um, you know, it, 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 it's known as the people's game. Uh, and, and it has to be for the people. Uh, and it can't be on this pedestal, this, this pedestal that's unattainable. Uh, we've got to get young people to think that this is their sport. And, and more and more are. And I think, you know, we've got, you know, as a result of that, just a really really exciting future ahead of us. Sure. Do, do you guys see it helping you, David, with, um, you know, the youth side of things? And, and I know how, how that ties into, but gosh, I feel like every kid I know is playing soccer nowadays. Like mm. almost every, seriously, every kid I know. Yeah. Does that translate forward as, as, I mean, you tap into those youth markets, certainly. Yeah. Um, but do you see uh, this new younger generation of North Americans, um, seeing this is their it's their primary sport and you know they have their club from an early age and that's who they get their heartbreak and misery and, and also excitement from yeah yeah we, we i mean we, we totally do when it's uh it's absolutely key to to what our tomorrow looks like we need we need young people to come in and see this is their sport in the past you know it, it's never been there's never been a participation issue in, in soccer in this country uh in the us and canada but people have kind of dropped off you know, when you might have played the sport, followed the sport, connected to the sport because you've got a favorite player, a favorite club. By the way, that you have a club in your hometown, you can go to games. Now you're just hooked, you season ticket, you're buying a jersey, you're watching on TV. You know, for the longest time, you might have played the game, but there was no way to connect beyond that because there wasn't a team in town. There wasn't a team in town that connected to this passion that you had for playing the game. Now we have that. So we're able to join up these dots a lot more now. And in the past, we probably couldn't. So if you're coming through this journey as a consumer who's a passionate individual who plays the sport or admires the sport or plays on even the FIFA video game, because that's also a very important way into uh, to this. And, you know, you guys are big supporters of EMLS and everything that we're doing around there. These are all key entry points for young people into the sport. We now give them outlets to then become fans of clubs, to follow clubs. To, to, to have favorite players. And one of the things that we're providing to really hyper-talented athletes in this country are more points of validation that the game of soccer can give you everything that you want as a young athlete or a young person. You know, you're seeing young players coming through MLS that are do, playing in front of 70,000 people every week in MLS, winning MLS Cup, representing their national team. And then they might get a big money move to buy in Munich and win the Champions League in 12 months, which is what happened with Alfonso Davies. And you could argue Alfonso Davies is probably one of the most exciting sports stars in all of Canada and the U.S. right now. Uh, he's certainly one of the most valuable young soccer players anywhere on the planet. And he was playing in MLS two, two years ago. So we're going to have a lot more of that as our owners invest in youth development and training centers and really cultivating the next base of talent that's going to represent our teams in MLS and the national teams of the U.S. and Canada. And then ultimately, who knows? Uh, but it's it's a really exciting uh, exciting time for the sport because we can join up those parts of the experience now and give someone yeah. uh, something to bite on. Yeah, those lines have been drawn from dot to dot. That's uh, that is an exciting time, certainly. Yeah. Well, I have uh, I have one last question for you, and then I'll give you your time back. That is, what is the what's the future of MLS look like? Well, I think I think you know really exciting. That's why. I'm here and I'm still motivated to be here and it's why I'm talking to you today and I think it's why you know you guys you know sign up to be a, a partner of MLS because you know the upside is just tremendous I think we've got we've got a number of markers in our future I mentioned earlier we just we just hit our 25th se 25th season last year yeah. that's not insignificant you know but for 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 a sports league in the US we're just mere babies 
but it provides us this opportunity to act like the most progressive sports league that's out there. And it affords us the ability to do interesting things, probably trying things and doing things that some of the other sports leagues might not have the opportunity to do because they've got more history and tradition and heritage. And it's harder for them to kind of be nimble. You know, and you think about from a timing point of view and what's ahead of us, you've got the 2026 World Cup right here in the US, Canada and Mexico. Like that will be the biggest sporting event that anyone has ever seen anywhere on the planet when, in, when it comes to this market in 2026. So talk about talk about something that is really going to light a fire underneath, you know, you know, the whole market, whether you're a young kid playing, you know, whether you're someone on the sidelines who likes to watch, you're an avid viewer on TV, or you don't even realize you're a true soccer fan yet because you jump in and out of big games and you're a fan of sports, but not really sure about this game of soccer yet. Uh, and I think it's just going to bring all these eyeballs and this focus on like there's a product here in North America that's pretty darn good. And I think we're going to continue to work on that. We've got this eyes on the prize 2026. I think you're going to see a really competitive U.S. men's national team, a really competitive Canadian team. You're going to see players in MLS representing a ton of other countries from around the world, which shows that there's a lot of talent that wants to be in MLS. A lot of talent sees their future in MLS. I think our league is going to grow and grow more and more significant as a result as a result of that. Um, and then we've got this fan culture that is only getting stronger and stronger and stronger. We've got this movement that's sitting around the game that is creating these cultures and subcultures in the cities of passionate fans that are making their voice heard and are building this movement with us and are creating these incredible experiences. You know, whether you're in Portland, Seattle, Toronto, Montreal, Orlando, Atlanta, Miami, I could go on and on. There's a special experience that's being created in those markets by these passionate fans that are creating this noise and this energy behind the goal uh, and creating this, this environment that is so authentic and organic built from the ground up. You know, you go to one of our stadiums, you know, you're not, the, the, the clapometer is not coming on telling you when to clap. You know, the fans <laughs> are singing and chanting and reacting to the things they want to sing and react to. And that's what young modern consumers want and fans want. They want to do it on their terms and they want to, sh they want to see that this thing that they're behind They've, they've kind of co-authored and they're part of, of, of shaping and growing this movement. And, and what an exciting time for us all to kind of have our hands around the table. And if I could just say, there, it's creating all of these energetic movements without commercial break. So mm -hmm. it can continue to build and build and build. It's just, it's exciting to watch. Yeah. Um, but David, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. It was awesome to hear more about, about the platform and, and how, how you look at it and how you view it. Um, I thank you for your time, and, and I hope you stay warm there in Brooklyn. Uh, appreciate it, Wayne. Thanks for being great partners. I look forward to meeting you physically, hopefully at an MLS event very, very soon. And, hopefully uh, very soon. Let's shoot yeah. for All-Star this summer. Can we do that? Hey, that would be nice. Somewhat, somewhere <laughs> warm feels really good at the moment when I look at eight inches of snow outside my uh, window at the moment. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, David, thank you very much. Take care, Wayne. Thanks All very right. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.